Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be covering as much as I can about items, um, what you should be thinking about when it comes to making items, what you should be going for in carousel, um, when to make suboptimal items and everything like that. Um, but in general, you make items to save HP, push win streak, and if you're smart about it, um, you can make a suboptimal item that gives you actually more value than a, a best of slot item could could give you. Um, and that's what slamming items in is. So throughout the entire video, I'm going to be talking about slamming items. And when I say slamming an item, so for example, in a game, I could be slamming a shiv. Um, slamming a shiv means that even though shiv is not a best in slot item, I think that shiv can actually outvalue a giant slayer, depending on if you um, make the item at a optimal game, game point. Um, so first of all, let me just start off with the tier list about the instant slam since I just introduced that term. So I'm splitting this tier list off instant slams, A, B, the whatever tier, and um, the carousel priority. Uh, let me just start from the top and I'll go to the bottom, talk about carousel, um, talk about just basically just the general approach of what you should be thinking about when it comes to items. But the instant slams are obviously fun. It's not worth greeting your spatula item. Having an extra unit on the board is ridiculous value. Um, Sunfire right now is really strong. In the patch it's coming tomorrow actually, or maybe even today when the video comes out, it's gonna be a lot, uh, a lot lower. But even then, um, it uses a belt and a chain, so it's pretty good. Um, Dusk, I'm pretty sure Dusk is still an instant slam. Six Dusk is, is pretty insane, and it's worth building your comp around it. Um, but the reason these, these are instant slams is because they're so flexible. Like Giant Giant Slayer, you can use in Riven and Ash. Ash can use it, Jin can use it. Um, it can be used by every item uh, or every uh, unit. Ionic Spark is another one of those items where it uses a cloak, which is really good because cloak is not that valuable. But not only that, but it can be used as a generic frontline or backline in every comp. For example, if I want it in my backline or as a backline DPS, I can put it on Kane. If I want it in my Brawler Ash comp, hey, I can put it on Set. It's just one of those items that can f that can kind of just like fall into place into every single comp. So is Hodge. Um, last item on Ash, Bison Slot is probably not Hodge, but you need GSQSS and the last item is flexible and Hodge fits there. It's really strong early game and saves HP. It pushes streaks. Um, it uses a worthless tier. It's just good. Uh, Bramble's one of those items that is so strong early game that it's just worth just making, streaking, saving HP, making money. Uh, TG is the same thing. Um, and same thing as Bramble. It's so strong early game. It gives so much value. Late game, you can just toss in a random set, random cane. Doesn't matter. Blue buff uses the most worthless item in the game, which is tier, in addition to cloak. But honestly, this is probably going to be an instant slam, but it's not as good as blue buff, obviously. That's the instant slams. It's items that <clears throat> you make to save HP, push a streak, and get rid of, or get rid of bad items, or are really flexible. So these are always going to be the instant slams. And the A tier are going to be units that are almost always, like you you almost always want it in every comp. I think Jeweled Gauntlet is is not as flexible as the other items, but the item is, is just really good. Um, it uses uh, a rod which is almost maybe the only rod item apart from Spark. Uh, Trap Claw is going to be a QSS replacement. It's each comp's backline needs a defensive item, uh, which is QSS or Trap Claw to cover the Aatroxes and Sejuani's, uh, random CCs, even Kane, uh, Trap Claw for Kane. Um, GA is just a generic good item. You can splash it on Warwick, you can splash it on Cannon, you can splash it on Riven, you can splash it on a Carry. It's just a really generic uh, item. Uh, Shroud is just a generic frontline item that can disable um, almost every comp in the game. It's good against Felix, against Ari, stuff like that. Gintsu is a really uh, generic early game pushing a streak item. It's like a budget giant slayer, but it's pretty good. Um, it can flex into every every comp in the game. But then as you see, as you get into the B and the LOL tier, it starts to get like item specific. So like BT can only go on Ash, IE can only go on Talon. Rabadons can almost, it, it can go on a few champs, but like the thing is you're using double rod and like there's not that many good item holders early. Uh, Zephyr early isn't that strong. Chalice doesn't have that, isn't that good in the meta because you have to misposition Yumi if you want to use it in Ari. Uh, Morello, honestly, just you don't really run Ezreal late game. Um, you don't really play Morgana. There's not really that many good Morello holders. But yeah, as you can see, the tier list just gets weaker and weaker, right? Like the items just feel generally weaker or less flexible. Um, and Deathblade is actually not bad, but the reason it's an LOL tier is because Giant Slayer is so much better. GA is so much better. And Deathblade uses two swords. For these items, like, don't get me wrong, um, Declaw is pretty good on Sejuani, but it's just, when I'm, when I'm thinking about an item, I'm thinking about 
How is it going to impact my early game? How is it going to save me HP? How is it going to get, uh, get me to level 7, level 8 more efficiently? How is it going to impact my uh, earlier boards? And the lower tier items really don't impact the board as much as the higher tier items. Don't get me wrong, I think QSS doesn't impact the board at all, but it is almost a necessity to have a QSS or a Trap Claw on your carry uh, going into the late game. Uh, Warmogs is actually just anti-synergy, it just gets one shot by GS. Um, but anyway, let me go into Carousel. The reason Glove and Chain are really good is because they can actually build almost every item in the game. So for example, Glove can go Trap Claw, QSS, even TG can use itself um, as an item. It, it can, it's just super flexible. And then the, the worst item in the, in the game is basically going to be Tier, Negatron, and Belt. But the glove can actually get rid of these items. It can nullify a garbage item that you got. So with tier, it's a Hodge, which is an instant slam. With QSS, uh, top of A tier. With Trap Claw, A tier. It just makes every good item. It can also give you the potential for a win streak early. That's why I really value glove, but it might change in different metas. Um, Chain can make Sunfire, it uses a worthless belt. Um, it can make an item with itself. It can make Bramble, it can even make Titans. It can make GA. It's just it's just a really flexible item and it, it can contest early boards, but I, I'm not gonna get into every Every single one but this this is when it gets like it's whatever um i think these three are the worst for sure and these two are the best and these three are so it's like s a b it's the ability for the item to clear or nullify garbage items which is really valuable because having a dead item is is not good <laughs> it's not good but anyway why make suboptimal items you're saving hp pushing streak and you can make more value in making a suboptimal item if it's at a specific game point. So I think I already said that, but the guide is going to be stage two, which is gonna be um, generally just win streak, lose streak, and the items dictate whether you're going for win streak or lose streak, but there's gonna be scenarios that I will cover. Um, stage three, it's basically slamming, sub you need to get into the habit of slamming suboptimal items, but trying to stay away from core items for your carry, or you pick up items according to your blocker, which I'll, which I'll cover uh, later into the video uh, more in depth. Uh, stage four, it's going to be, um, you should be counting your items, which is the blockers that I'll, I'll talk about in a bit. You evaluate HP so you, to, so you can see um, how, how aggressive do I have to be in making items to save HP, or not only that, but also how likely am I to get a item that I need um, because I pick priority. Um, and then you send items according to the game state, but I'll cover that. Um, I just want to do a general overview. But first of all, let me just introduce blockers real quick. So by, by the end of Raptors, which is stage four PVE or neutrals, um, I'm going to say that I'm probably going to I'm probably going to say neutrals a lot because I'm used to that. But on stage one, you're getting your first component. Stage two, you're getting your second component. Stage three, you're getting a third component. And stage four, you're getting another component. So you are basically in control of four items. And the other eight plus items are from PVE. And I'm going to call those natural items. These are natural items. Um, it's more rare to natural three of the same component over a course of the game. It's super rare, but it is possible. For example, um, I get one Negatron Cloak from Stage 2 PvE, and then or Stage 1 PvE, and then I get another Cloak from, from Krugs, and I get another Cloak from Wolves. Sucks. I have three Cloaks. Um, but it, it's definitely possible. Um, it's it's less likely. But the reason, but it's not possible to get like more, right? And and that's where the blockers come in. Um, and it's why opening carousel is so important. You don't want to be stuck with three or four cloaks or three or four belts. And glove can also get rid of an extra cloak. And that's why I, I value glove. But the reason this is important because imagine you're going to stage three, right? And you are win streaking by slamming a Ginsu and a Bramble. And even though Ginsu is not a best in slot item for almost any champion in the game, it's a pretty decent item. And not only that, it, it gives you the ability to win streak early game because Ginsu has infinite value early game. Usually the fights last a really long early game because it's just going to be frontline hitting each other and backline just trying to do as much DP as is possible. I slammed a Ginsu, which is bow plus uh, needless, which is, or, or is rod, and bramble, which is double chain. So um, imagine I started the game with chain. You have a brawler frontline and you're looking for Ash. And your Ash obviously doesn't have a giant slayer. And on the next carousel, you can either go for bow bow or bf which one are you going to go for you're probably going to go you're more likely to go for the bow and try to natural the bf sword from wolves or raptors because you already got dropped a bow so if you think about it let's say there's three a's three b's and three c's obviously there's more than three items in the game but if you already natural one a now when you're taking an item from the pool 
imagine you can only take uh, items from from this pool. So if A is equal to bow um, and B is equal to BF sword, if like obviously I would go ahead and take a bow because I'm more likely to get a BF sword which is B than a bow which is A. And that's where blockers come in. And you're going to be counting your items and memorizing what items I got from uh, neutrals and what items I got off carousel. You need to make sure you can differentiate from the both when trying to get the 50-50 down on uh, increasing your chances to get a perfect item or ending on a perfect item from neutrals. But anyway, that's that's going to be blockers and I'll, I'll, I'll cover it more. So if you if you didn't get understand it the first time, I'm definitely going to create examples um, in the future. So just stay tuned for that or you can rewatch um, and see if you can uh, understand it then. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start on stage two. So in the current meta, your backline, let's say, um, the, the, okay, right now the two S comps, it might change, but usually the carries have a um, a little slot of best in slot items. Um, they can hold three items and almost two of them are like best in slot for sure. So for Ash and Jin, it's GS plus QSS and Trap Claw, or, or it's GS plus QSS or Trap Claw. Um, obviously QSS is better, but Trap Claw is, is an acceptable substitution, which is gonna be Bow, BF, Glove, and Negatron. But if you were to look at my tier list, the instant slams are instant slams because they can save HP early or they can give you a streak early and then basically just pay themselves off off gold, gold and HP. So here's an example on stage two when you when you have a strong opener and you're looking for a win streak and you're given tier glove and negatron. Um, and you started Glove. I'm probably always going to make a Hodge and flex the Negatron because the Negatron is natural. Um, and that'll, I'll, I'll, I'll stress the importance of the, the natural Negatron and starting Glove later. Um, but that'll, that'll tie with blockers. But the Hodge is going to streak you a lot harder than a QSS. Um, even though Hodge is not going to be best in slot for any carry as the game goes later and later, it's one of those items that can that are so much more impactful on the early game than a QSS would be, so I would always make Hodge first. You would never make QSS and just try to get by with it because you automatically just made your board 20 times weaker than someone that would have slammed the Hodge. And this is the same thing. If you start a tier, I would almost always do Hodge Negatron. The reason I'm giving this example with tier is because it changes when you start with a cloak. If you start a cloak and you natural the glove in the tier, if you make the Hodge, a lot of times you're going to be in a scenario where you get another Negatron and you're going to be like, well, shit, now what? Um, I have a D-Claw. Th that, that is somewhat acceptable, right? D-Claw is fine, but also like it's not going to happen every time, right? Sometimes you're going to get a Ionic Spark. Uh, you can bail yourself out of one of the Negatrons or you get another glove and you can make a uh, QSS that way. If, if you, There's another way you can do this, especially if you're on a loose streak. If you noted that you started with a Negatron and you know you can get another Negatron natural pretty likely from uh, Krugs or Wolves and you can anticipate that you're getting um, a potential D-Claw, what units can use D-Claw? Is what you could what is what you could be thinking about. For example, um, Sejuani uses D Claw really well. Four Vanguard Sejuani with D Claw can almost cast three to four times a fight. So if you see the tier in the glove, maybe you don't slam Hodge. Maybe you start building towards Ari. You can use the glove for Jeweled Gauntlet, which is the best in slot. You can use the tier for a blue buff, which is almost best in slot for Ari. I think GA is slightly better than blue buff. And then you can use the Negatron as your uh, Sejuani holder. But that's that's one way to think about it. Um, there's there's infinite scenarios. For example, um, if you start with Chain, um, maybe you're more likely to look Riven um, because Riven can use infinite chains. But there's going to be a lot of scenarios and hopefully this scenario helps you out on why you should be thinking about blockers. But now, now I'm going to go ahead and add an opener or add a scenario, but add an opener so I can stress the importance of item holders. Um, I think that item holders is a really valuable, it, it kind of dictates what items you're slamming as well. So if I have a brawler frontline opener and I started bow, and I get another bow and I get a tier and you're, and you're looking for a win streak. I'm down for a shift slam because the, the next bow can go into a GS. And if you think about it, right here, let me, let me, let me bring up a tier list. So let's say Brawler Ash, right? What did I say was the best in slot for Ash? Um, Sunfire for Set, um, GS, QSS, and Ginsu, right? And Ginsu is one of those items that's not like Ashley best in slot. It's just like the last item. It doesn't really matter. You just need two of the three. I'm fine with slamming a shiv here because my next bow can potentially make GS. You don't want to sit on bench with a bow and a tier when an extra bow in Ash is not that valuable and an extra and tiers are just not valuable in Ash, period. So you want to get rid of the excess and especially the unneeded items. So this is going to be an example of playing for streak. So I have, I'm win streaking and I have bow and negatron and I get into carousel and I also, 
I'll, I'll talk about it in a sec. But you see, I have Bo and Negatron, right? And what is best in slot in Ash? It's QSS for sure, right? But the thing is, I started the game with a bow. And because I started, I know that I started the game with a bow, the chances of me getting another bow item is pretty likely. So I can actually go ahead and because I'm on a three streak, I want to continue pushing this streak. So here, especially because it's also three gold, I'm going to go ahead and go for the tier. Even if this Maokai were two gold, I would probably always go for the tier. But if it were three gold, I would almost, I would hesitate going for QSS. But I think the tier is still correct. I want to go ahead and push my streak, knowing that I started with a bow, expecting myself to get another bow. Um, I'm more likely to get another bow in the game. And um, there's that. And then I, I actually think this ship has actually win streaks me all the way until whenever. Look, I'm still 100 HP at 3.5. Um, I'm 100 HP at 4.5. Obviously, I probably high rolled this game. But... I think a lot of the reason why I'm so I'm still streaking, I'm so healthy, and I'm kind of controlling the lobby is because of the shift slam. And look, my items worked out. I got a GS and I got a QSS. But that's because I know I, I noted that I started with the bow and I still naturaled some decent items in the future. Um, so that's an example of blockers and thinking about blockers um, and, and pushing streaks. Um, and then Vanguard opener, and you also need to think about the mid game. Different openers have different transitions. For example, a Vanguard transition is more likely to go into Ari. A Cultist transition is more likely to go into Riven. A Brawler uh, opener is more likely to go into Ash. But you have to think about the mid game. So if you started a glove and you go at Rod Glove Negatron with a Vanguard opener, I'm more likely to slam Jeweled Gauntlet, especially with a Mage opener. So this is one example. So if you see Rod Glove Negatron, if you look at the tier list, right, I think that you can almost always slam Ionic as well. Um, I wouldn't hate you if you slammed Ionic. That's fine. But the more advanced tip is that if you if you kind of predict what you're going to go into mid game with an opener. So like here, here is the example that I brought here. My board, as you can see, is going to be a chosen Vanguard Wukong. And as I go into stage two, I see that, hey, I have four mages, I'm level four, and I can go three mage, two vanguard. But the Ionic Spark is a lot less value than the Jeweled Gauntlet on TF, because my TF can actually cast twice and carry the fight, much more than an Ionic Spark that relies on them casting. So I'm going to go ahead and slam this and just pivot my entire mid game. And when I say mid game, I mean stage three around my TF, and then as you transition into stage four, this jeweled gauntlet slam probably saves a uh, 10 to 20 HP. And then you can easily just force force Ari from there. And that, that's an example of looking at opener. There's another thing is you can go either way with the opener. Your items are pretty flexible. You don't know if it's win streak or lose streak. And here's an example of that. I think this is the Diana game where I, okay, so here I'm not sure I have chain chain glove. I'm not sure if I should be slamming uh, Bramble because as you can see, I have Moonlight Diana and I have four Dianas. Maybe I can play Diana this game. So what I did was I waited to one and I see if I won without slamming items. So if I lose, I would just go ahead and force lose streak into carousel, get another Diana item and play Diana. But because I won, I'm just going to slam the Bramble and play a comp that can use Bramble. Um, so as you can see, I probably, I'm just going to buy the Wukong, probably slam the Bramble, um, go ahead and level here, and just ditch the game plan of Diana, slam the Bramble, win streak as hard as possible into a 4-1 or 4-5 transition into a comp that can use Bramble, such as Riven. And I'm pretty sure that's what I did this game, and I don't know what I placed, but I'm, sh I'm sure I did fine. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm playing Riven. It's, yeah. <laughs> you just you just play, play aggressive and... Um, that's why Riven is so good, because it can use almost every slammable item early game. Saves HP early, it's super consistent, um, but there's that. Um, so I covered three examples here, um, but this is these are some approaches that you should be thinking about. Um, one would be um, looking for streaks. Uh, two would be your opener. What can you transition into the mid game? And when you're not sure whether you're going for a win streak or you're not sure what you should be playing, here's an example for that. And I hope those three examples are somewhat helpful. Stage three, it's you almost always want to slam suboptimal items when high HP, especially when the component items can't be used by other units. Uh, I'll get into if it, uh, I'll get into um, an example, but especially if you don't have one out of two components. For another best in slot slash perfect item. For example, if I have, if I want to carry Ari, the best in slot is probably GA Jewel Gauntlet Jewel Gauntlet. If I don't even have um, a single BF sword or chain, you're gonna start thinking about just ditching GA in general. I'm just gonna play my Ari without GA, and the and you basically want to just just commit. Um, because the, the value you get from slamming items on stage three is so much because the entirety of stage three can be make or break 40 HP. Um, but you want 
to uh, try to save the components, but also slam good substitutions are is, is fine. So like, let's say I, I have QSS, or I can't make QSS, but I can make trap wall. I think making trap wall is perfectly acceptable. It also depends on the carry and item leader. If you don't have anyone that can hold trap wall, which is impossible by the way, um, but maybe other items, it's not impossible. So an example of depending on carry and item holder is if I have a bow, I, I'm gonna ignore blockers for this example, just to keep it simple. And I have, and I'm, I'm playing my mid game around a chosen Aphelios. Um, Aphelios with Ginsu is so much stronger than an Aphelios with GS, so on Carousel, even if I have the opportunity to build GS, sometimes it is correct to actually finish the Ginsu because um, you are going to be saving at least 20 HP because a Ginsu Aphelios is 30 times stronger than a GS Aphelios. But here is an example of slamming suboptimal items. My chat actually yelled at me for it. I think that's just because they're less experienced. I actually went on to win this game, and this is not just one example, but I go into Krugs and Oh, this is the same example I used earlier in this video. I have Jeweled Gauntlet, Rod, and Negatron. And hey, it sucks that I lost my streak, but I tried. And from Krugs, I get Tier, Bow, and another Tier. And at this point, it's like, hey, um, I, I don't have a single BF. I don't have a single chain. Maybe my Ari cannot use a GA. And that, that is perfectly acceptable because the value I get out of slamming a Ginsu and a blue buff on this TF. Like, think about you load in and you fight a TF with Jeweled Gauntlet and a Rod versus Jeweled Gauntlet, Ginsu, blue buff. Like, what are you more scared of? It's it's the three item TF for sure, especially going to the game. So that's exactly what I do. And I'm pretty sure I transition into this game with, or I transition into my late game with infinite HP because this is, is just so much more valuable. And hey, look here, I lost, right? Even though I lost, me slamming that probably killed that last unit that I just killed. It's the difference of two, four, six, eight HP. And that's all the difference late game because it lets you greed more and more intervals as the game goes later. And it lets you like reevaluate and, and roll on higher levels, roll more gold on higher levels because you can exchange HP for eco. Um, but I actually did end up going to win this game, even with those items on Ari, like Ginsu, Blue Buff, Jeweled Gauntlet. It's perfectly acceptable. If you think the item is acceptable on the item on the unit late game, I would do it. If you have an acceptable item holder mid game, such as the TF I just had. I know this is pretty rambly, and I, I apologize. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Stage four is is when you when you need to count items, and you also need to evaluate your HP because you need to see your priority pick on the carousel. Um, I'll give examples in a second. So going to stage four, um, you need to start counting items because that'll come important later but also you need to pay attention to uh what hp do you do you intend on being at 4-3 how much priority do i have in this carousel if you have high priority such as first or second pick i would actually be willing to slam um, items and only keep one item but if you are going to be one of the lower picks i think you want to slam or almost greet three items and then have it flexible on what item to make from your carousel. But I'll, I'll go into examples in a second. Basically, if I have nine items, you can slam a lot of suboptimal items, but you can use blockers for going for the last best in slot. So for example, if I haven't natural the bow yet, you go for a BF sword and hopefully you get a bow from uh, Krugs. Um, you're not gonna get a bow every single time, but you're, you're more likely than not to get it. Um, if you have 11 items, I'm down to just slam items because the chances of you, you might not even get an item <laughs> from, from Krugs. You might as well just send the items and keep the most flexible item to finish on carousel. Um, I'll go into some examples in a sec. And then at 10 items, I'm down to just hold two item components, go into Krugs or get the 11th item from Carousel and then greet the two items and go into PVE and pray for a best of slot item. But the most general tip I can give you here is you wanna keep the most flexible item. But if you're if you're high priority, uh, if you're low HP and you have high pick priority, it's the exception. You can actually just go ahead and um, slam the items and then keep a unflexible item such as bow and just assume that you're going to get the bf sword if you're first or second pick um if you're second pick a lot of times you can actually scout the the lower hp people but just keep in mind that the lowest hp people can can change between the three rounds um i'm going to go into some examples here um for example for brawler ash who is my carry it's ash what are the items you need to use qss plus gs plus whatever and i slammed i have qss plus gs plus sunfire slammed and so these are the items um don't really don't really worry about blockers because i want to keep the um, example kind of uh, simple but if i were low hp and i know i have good pick priority here i'm down to even slam frozen heart especially if i have a lot of items and i anticipate not getting items um if i anticipate getting items here i probably wouldn't slam frozen heart but um if i were low hp I would, 
I would consider slamming Frozen Heart, and then the rod will almost always go for Ginsu. Like the tier in the chain is not going to finish an item on my Ash as much as the rod is going to be. So that's why I'm more incentivized to use the, the useless items, the tier in the chain, because I cannot give my Ash the last uh, damage item. But if I'm high HP, the chances of me getting the item I want, which is going to be Bow to finish the Ginsu, is a little bit lower so i'm going to greed the three items and make a more optimal item from carousel and then and then greed the items until pve and maybe i can make a last uh, damage item there i mean i guess that's my guide i i hope i was somewhat helpful i i know that there's actually just so much information i, I tried to be as general as possible um a lot of it is really scenario centric i tried to give examples that covered what i was trying to talk about but please let me know like i think for this video i will a hundred percent uh, respond to questions um, in the comments. Like I'll actually actively look and respond to questions, um, which I don't usually do because I'm kind of fucking lazy. But <laughs> like th there, there's a lot of info and it, it's really valuable. I think uh, items is what separates a player from like low challenger to high challenger and even high challenger to consistently top 10. So please ask away. I'll try to answer as many as possible. Peace.